guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, it's very appreciated. Hit that like button, give me a thumbs up, and make sure you share the videos. The other day I was out four-wheel driving and my clutch was feeling a little bit funny. I was starting to have to double clutch to get it to change. I thought, this is odd. So I got under my car and had a bit of a look and poked around and I poked the rubber seal on my slave cylinder and a whole heap of clutch fluid came out. It's now all wet around there, which means that it's leaking. So I picked this up. Uh, it's a, a brand new one. Now, you, sometimes you can replace the seals in these things, but they're cheap enough just to buy and replace the whole unit. Now, the one that I have purchased is a Kelpro. Um, not a Toyota brand name one, anything like that, but it should still do the deal. Now, depending on your motor, there is going to be a slightly different mount for each of these. Some of them mount this way, some of them mount that way. Depends on your motor. So make sure you get the right part for your car. Uh, now it doesn't come with the push rod. My, the one I've got, the, you use the push rod that's already on your vehicle. So I have got some brake fluid, which is what you use in your, in your clutch as well. So obviously this is a manual. Now, I will be taking the cap off my clutch fluid reservoir over there so that it can drain. It's not down massively, but it's best to fix this before it becomes a major problem. So let's get into it. So removing the top from my clutch cylinder here so that my oil can uh, fluid can drain out. It's pretty black in there, so it needs a flush anyway. It isn't down much, but so it's just starting to leak and not push properly. Let's go down under the car. Okay, so up here is what I'm going to be replacing. This is my line coming down from the top. So I'm going to have to drain that first. I don't want any muck in here. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean with a wire brush. Just make sure it doesn't dirt doesn't come down on top of you everywhere. Now I'm about to crack this here, which means I'm going to get brake fluid come pouring out. So I have a buckety thing to catch the brake fluid so I can dispose of it in a proper manner. I'm using a 14 millimeter socket ready to catch the brake fluid as it comes dripping down. Now keep this bolt nice and clean. I was actually thinking it might have dripped down faster than that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this back in as it's not dripping down quite as fast as I was hoping it would. Just going to nip it up finger tight so I can keep working. I'm now using a 12mm socket. To undo the slave cylinder. Now I have done this without taking the bottom tray off. It would give you more room, the protection tray, but I don't see any reason to take it off today, so I'm doing it around it. Now you will need to keep those bolts, because the new unit does not come with the bolts. Okay, now I'll just undo that again and let the rest of the brake fluid drain down into my little catcher. Now I just dropped the little tiny washer, little brass washer that comes on it. Make sure you don't lose that. That's a seal. Okay, so here's the new one. 
here's the old one we do have the same part now I'll need to reuse that screw so I'll give that a clean up and we will have to bleed the system also there goes the little washer again now you can see on this where it's pink that's where the uh, fluid has been leaking as well and cleaning it so we want this push rod so oh you can see right there how badly this one has actually been leaking now so it actually drips out it's dripping down there onto my rag and this is full of absolute yuck so we want this push rod I'm just going to go and tip this into my little catcher so that's actually been leaking quite bad so we want this rod I didn't purchase a new one. I'm just checking to see if it's worn. It is a little bit worn on one end, but not not too bad. So what we do, and this one's going to be a bit tricky because it is a, a tight seal. We poke it in like that now I've popped the little seal out of the back here pushing that in I'm gonna put that back in just for now Oop, pop that again There we go, that's better. Now I can push that seal in with a bit of air. Now I'll clip it back on. There we go, sitting a lot better now. Thank you dog for coming through my shot. So, now I'm going to bolt this back on. I am going to pop this little seal back in just for now until I'm ready to screw that because I don't want any muck or yuck getting into the system. Okay, so now most of my, or pretty much all of my fluid has drained through the system. I've got one little drop there. Not too worried about that. So we line our new unit up. One thing that I have just done missed there, and I'll unscrew this so I can show you guys. Make sure when you put it back on that your push rod here lines up with your clutch. So push it in, line it up, and you may need to de depress it, the cylinder a little bit to get your bolts to line up. I just missed putting that in. So make sure you tighten these back up or you're going to have issues. Okay, now I'm going to remove the little yellow plug. Now there's a bit of muck on that, so 
bit of a clean. So we've got our bolt and our little washer. It went through the little brass or little copper washer. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this cylinder here, if I can grab it, back by hand, because there's no fluid in the cylinder where, the, where it needs to be. So I'm going to try and jam a bit of rag up in there. This is just going to save me a bit of time bleeding it. So I've got my cylinder jammed back and I'm just going to nip nip that up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the top and put fluid in the system. So I've filled that right to the top. Now you're going to go down and release the cylinder and it should suck a whole lot of that into the system. Now we'll see how much it actually sucked in. Okay, so you can see it sucked down from the top down to about our full level. Now this doesn't mean that we are full and ready to go. We still have to bleed the system. We'll put that on so there's no yuck in the system and I'm going to have to find a second person now to do the bleed on this clutch. So what I'm doing is I'm popping this little rubber cap off if I can. Now you don't want to lose this rubber cap because it protects muck getting into the end of your bleeder valve. So make sure you keep that in a safe place. I'm hooking up my bleeder kit. So what I've done is I've given up on the vacuum hose. I have somebody up in the seat. And what you do is you get here and you crack it just as they push the pedal down. And the fluid will come out. You ready? Oh, hang on, I got my... Closed. Yep, closed. Again. It's locked. Ready? Yeah. Go. Locked. Ready? Yeah. Go. Locked. Out yeah, it's solid air still. Oh? Air, heaps of it. Not sure why you're getting bubbles. Hey? Huh? Topping it up again. So what I want to see is no air in that system there. In that hose, just here. Ready? Yep. Okay, that was solid fluid. Do one more. Right. Yep, that. Just a second. Okay, you can see bubbles there now, but when when the person in the car pushed the foot, that was solid. That's just air leaking back through the system now. So when the clutch is depressed, you can see it actually working the lever here now so that's how we bleed it now when you're finished don't forget to replace your little rubber cap 
over that. Give it all a wash down with water because um, brake fluid is corrosive. So give it all a wash and you're good to go.